Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this chapter 9, the start of chapter 9 that is on integration techniques. Okay, In this video clip that is 9.1, I'll be going through the first type of the integration techniques, that is integration involving polynomials. Okay, uh, How do we go about doing this kind of problems? If you actually download from my handouts, I actually give in the form of table the following. We all know that in integration, is basically the reverse of differentiation. So for example, if you differentiate x to the power n plus 1, okay, uh, that will give me n plus 1 multiplied by x to the power n. Okay. So in a similar context, if we are to do a reverse by doing the integration of this expression here, n plus 1, x to the power n, dx, and what we will get will be x to the power n plus 1 plus some kind of constant c1 where c1 is any arbitrary constant so then you can take this constant out from the integration we will have as x to the power n dx with a n plus 1 in front and that gives me x to the power n plus 1 plus c1 you divide throughout by n plus 1 we have the integration of x to the power n as 1 over n plus 1 multiplied by x to the power n plus 1 plus c1 over n plus 1. Okay. So with this result, replacing this c1 over n plus 1 by a new constant c, we get the following result. And this result, of course, already shown in your handout on the right side of the table. Okay. Now where c is an arbitrary constant. Okay, so likewise, if you actually try to generalize to a situation like this, if you're to differentiate fx to the power of n plus 1. Now this fx can be any functions, that means it can be polynomials, it can be trigal, can be exponential, can be anything. Whenever we differentiate this, in the last, few, last chapter on differentiation, we say that we get the following. Reduce the power by 1. So you do the similar approach, and you just integrate on both sides. Okay. We will get fx to the power n plus 1 plus a constant, say, C2. Okay. Again, taking out n plus 1 because the constant from the integral and divide through by n plus 1, and we will get the second result. Okay. n plus 1, fx to the power n plus 1, plus C2 divided by n plus 1, which I call a new constant, C. arbitrary constant okay so here we have two results the first result is when you integrate x to the power n okay we will obtain 1 over n plus 1 x to the power n plus 1 plus a constant c and the second result is integrating any general function fx to the power n that will give me okay sorry i think i make this slight mistake here when you bring the n plus 1, reduce the power by 1, there will be an f prime x here. Okay, I miss out this f prime x. So that means that we integrate this whole thing, we'll get a f prime x dx. Okay, and of course dividing by n plus 1 throughout, we get the following. Okay, like this. Okay, so this will be the result that shows that we integrate fx to the power n, there must be a derivative in front of the fx to the power n. Okay? So this is also the other result that is given on your handout. So let me just give two more examples that apply this particular result. Okay? Uh, the first example given in my handout is to integrate x squared 3 minus 2x cubed to the power of one third dx. Okay. 
Okay. Now, just now I've actually given you the result for the integration involving f prime x fx to the power n dx, and that gives me fx to the power of n plus one over n plus one plus a constant c. Okay. So whenever you are given this kind of question like this, take note that there is a power here. So this power naturally should be n. Okay. So this will actually be the fx. Okay. So we hope that the term in front of this fx to power n turns out to be f prime x. Okay. So if you differentiate this 3 minus 2x cubed to get f prime x, you realize that it's minus 6x squared. So minus 6x squared is similar to x squared here. What we just need to do is introduce a minus 6 into the integrand. Or one third dx. When you introduce a minus 6 here, that means that you must balance it out by multiplying by minus 1 over 6 again outside. So what we will get will be minus 1 over 6. Now it follows exactly the same form as the formula with this as the fx, this as the n, this as the f prime x. Okay. So you use this formula directly, you will get fx to the power n plus 1. So if n is 1 third, n plus 1 will be 4 over 3 divided by the n plus 1, which is 4 over 3, plus a constant c. Okay? So you can simplify it. Okay? You will get minus 1 over 8 into 3 minus 2x cubed to the power of 4 over 3 plus c. Well, that comes the first solution, the solution to the first question. Now let's take a look at the second part, second question, which is to integrate sine to the power of 5 x dx. Okay. Now for sine to the power of 5 x dx, if you actually tend to think that this sine x is actually fx, you will need the f prime x. Okay. So how do we actually get the f prime x from there? Okay. You might actually have to think about trying to split this sine to the power of 5 x into sine to the power of 4 x sine x dx. Okay. So that means that this probably will be the, hopefully, the f prime x. Okay? And we know that cosine and sine are related in the sense that if you are to differentiate cosine x, you get minus sine x. So that means that our aim is to try to change this one to in terms of cosine x. Okay? How do we do that? We can use the identity of sine square x. plus cosine square x equals to 1. That will allow me to change the sine to the power of 4x as 1 minus cosine square x. Okay, this term will be sine square x. You square it, become sine to the power of 4x times sine x dx. Okay. Then, you can go ahead and expand this expression out. You get 1 minus 2 cosine square x plus cosine to the power of 4x times sine x dx. Okay, so if you open up, you get sine x dx minus 2 cosine square x sine x dx plus cosine to the power of 4x sine x dx. So there are three terms here. Okay. So how do we integrate sine x? Okay. It will simply be minus cosine x that you have learned already back in your secondary school. Okay. And how do we integrate this? If you notice that this, if we believe that this one is fx, this is the n. Okay. The derivative of cosine x is minus sine x. So that means that you need a minus sine x there. Okay, so what I can do is I bring the minus into this term. I'll get the following plus here cosine square x times minus sine x dx. So in that way, this becomes a derivative of cosine x. 
And finally, the last one, you put a minus here instead of a plus so that I can bring the minus into the sine x. Okay. Now we can directly apply the formula to each of these three terms. Okay. And we'll have it as follows. Let me write the answers here. If it, this one becomes minus cosine x. Okay, this is the f x to the power n. So we have plus 2 cosine cube x over 3. Okay, and for this one, it becomes minus cosine to the power 5x over 5 plus c, where c is an arbitrary constant. Okay, that actually will be the solution to the second example. So in both examples, you notice the key concept is actually to identify the function f x as well as its corresponding f prime x. Okay, yeah, thank you.